My name is Megan McCord. I'm from the South African Shark Conservancy, which is a conservation and research group based in Hermanus. And in 2009, we decided to come back and give it another go. Uh, this time around, we were going to use some professional shark anglers who had a lot of experience um, targeting sharks in the coast. We managed to catch this massive female Zambezi shark, whereupon we sort of we tagged the animal with an acoustic transmitting tag, um, which we could then follow around with a hydrophone um, and determine what her position is in the system while we're following her. After we released that big shark, who we nicknamed Nyami Nyami, the Zambezi River God, and she was landed up here. Now these little white dots just represent point positions on the shark that we took um, while we were following her around with a hydrophone. And I think what's important to note, she really didn't spend much time outside of the system while we were following her this time. We then noticed, and you guys who spend a lot of time fishing on the river probably know this as well, is that these sharks like to hang, up, hang out up around the power lines area. They see a lot of fish in that area. Um, and I think you know, the reason they're spending so much time there is probably because there's a lot of boat activity, a lot of lines in the water, um, a lot of fish being caught, and it's a really easy source of food. You know, the you results from, the preliminary results from that track uh, indicated that the shark swam as far as about 32 kilometers upstream to Limontane. Now, this was really fascinating for us because that's outside of the, the salt wedge, so that it was completely fresh up there at that stage, and she really had no trouble moving between the salt and the fresh water. And I think we were very lucky to, to be able to spend so much time with her. So we tried coming back to, to catch her again and put this tag on her, and we didn't manage to. She really avoided our baits the whole time. It was quite interesting. I don't know if maybe she'd stopped feeding for a while um, or if she'd just cottoned on to our whole plan. But whilst we were tracking her um, a few kilometers upriver, we had two fishermen um, with big, a very big cob and a big grunter, um, which was bitten off in the lower reaches of the, of the river. And until that time, we'd obviously suspected that there were multiple sharks in the system, but had no proof yet either. And this was the proof that we needed to determine there were, there were several sharks here, which I'm sure most of you can attest to. So in 2010, what we're really going to try and do is find some money <laughs> to keep the study going for the next few years. What we plan on doing is trying to answer these, these questions and, you know, why, first of all, are these sharks occurring in the river? What are they doing here? Are they just coming in to feed? Um, are they coming in to mate? Um, some evidence that we've seen in the last few days suggests that they may be um, breeding around the area, um, but we don't know that yet. We want to know how they, how they use the river and does it vary between the sexes and the size classes? That's a really important um, question sort of for management and knowing um, what they're going to be doing in the system in the long term. I also want to know what the population size is. Um, we've been very lucky over the last few days with our fishing effort. We've had a really high catch per unit effort and we were surprised by that. Um, but we still think that the river may be able to support within the region of uh, 15 to 20 sharks, maybe even more. The animals that we've caught in this system have been really, really big animals. Obviously, the, the big female last year, she was a world record. She was four meters long. That's half a meter longer than the previous known um, record. And the two animals that we've caught in the last, um, since last Friday have also been very big males. They were 299 centimeters and 287 centimeters. Um, we spoke to people at the Natal Sharks Board and in all of their years of collecting data on Zambezi sharks, they've never seen sharks that big. So why are you guys getting such big sharks in the river? Is it because they're, they're fed so well? The system is very healthy. There's a lot of cob, a lot of grunter, um, a lot of food for these animals to eat. Um, and that's potentially why we think that there have been no attacks on people as well, is that they are so well fed, there's no reason to search out an alternative food source. <coughs> now, 
that's very important for the management of the system if you um, impose size limits and bag limits and things like that on the recreational catches and sustain the Cobb and Grunter populations, um, you, I think, would be much less likely to have an attack by a Zambezi shark.